be seated if you haven't been. Uh, uh, Merry Christmas to you. This is Christmas Sunday, and I'm excited uh, for what the, the Lord has for us today. Uh, I want to open us uh, in prayer for a couple things. Uh, some of you maybe may not be aware, but like, I don't know, Burnett County, maybe the entire state of Texas uh, is having a sickness issue right now. So uh, as, as I pray for the service today, I also want to pray for those who are struggling or have family members that are struggling with their health. Uh, a lot of flu stuff going around, so wash your hands uh, and, uh, and pay attention. Uh, and then, um, you know, just want to have uh, people be healthy and then have a, a healthy Christmas as well. And also want to pray for uh, our nation today. Um, most of us, I would assume, in this room are Americans. And if you're not, well, you're in America. So uh, uh, there are a lot of reasons to pray for our nation. Um, and uh, no matter what side somebody finds himself on, uh, or, or maybe they feel uh, stuck in the middle of something, uh, in, in their, in their, where they're looking and how they're thinking of things, um, we want to pray for our nation and pray for our leadership. Um, when the angels spoke peace on earth, they spoke it to a nation, a people who were captive. So, Jesus can bring peace in the midst of what might seem like chaos, because that's just what He does. So, uh, would you join with me as we pray for people to be healthy, and for our nation, and then for the service today? Father, I thank you for being a God we can go to. We can, we can lay out our needs, our desires. We can, we can ask for, for your will to be done. We can, we can confidently, even with humility, uh, proclaim the things that, that advance you, Jesus. And so right now, I just pray first and foremost for all of those that are sick uh, in, our, in our church family and those connected with them, that you would just heal them. I pray that this, this flu uh, thing that's going around in the state of Texas, you just eradicate that and people would be healthy. I pray that people would just begin to get well even right now, that you would just begin to bring health uh, into their bodies uh, and give them wisdom on, on, uh, on what to do to, to stay healthy and to, and to grow into health. And, and I pray for a, a wonderful Christmas uh, for families that might, now have, might right now have people uh, sick. Lord, I pray for our nation. I pray for our, our elected officials. I pray for uh, uh, from the local level here and all those that we love so much and are so blessed by all the way up to, the, uh, to, the, uh, to Congress and to the, the, the Supreme Court and to our president and all those that, that work with our president and vice president. And I pray uh, you give them wisdom. I pray uh, for favor uh, for them. I pray for peace uh, to, to be able to walk a, a righteous and integrity road uh, even with differences of, of opinion. I pray for protection over our nation and over our political system. And I pray that uh, we would continue to be a nation that blesses nations because you've gifted us with so much. And, and I pray for righteous men and women who follow Jesus to pray and pray and pray and not choose to jump in on rhetoric, but open the Word of God and, uh, and speak back what it says and stand in what it says and how it says to stand and even to serve. And Would you bless this service, this Christmas Sunday and all that we're going to do. I pray that we, 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 we rejoice today because this is the day we, we specifically turn and remember uh, all that you've done in bringing this promise of a, of a Messiah born as a baby. And we, we celebrate on this Christmas Sunday. So bless our service and may our greatest act of worship be responding to you, Holy Spirit. In your name we pray. Amen. So as our minds turn to, to Christmas, you know, we, we, we have so much going on, but we're, we turn our attention, or we should turn our attention to this promise that, that God made at the beginning of mankind's fall. All the way back to Genesis 3, He makes this promise that one day He would send a rescuing king to rule forever. Not a liberating king for a moment to get a country out of trouble, but a, a rescuing king that would rescue us for all time. And so we should live in, in the midst of this joyful excitement and anticipation. A joyful excitement over what has happened and what is now, and then, and then this joyful anticipation of, of what is to come. Because when it comes down to it, we should be able to ask and answer the question, what if Christmas gave you everything good that was ever promised to you in the form of Jesus Christ, King of Kings. From the beginning, the Christmas story has been this, this one of fulfilled longing. It, it reaffirms our faith. It, uh, it gives us a reason to celebrate the, the goodness and closeness of God. That's what the, the name Emmanuel means, this God 
with us. And just again, take that in. God with you. The creator God with little old you. And oftentimes we struggle to see God at work in our, in our messy lives, our struggling lives, or whatever we're walking through. Especially when we feel really crusty, or we, we, we say something like, there isn't much hope for a, a mess like me. So Christmas is this beautiful moment that, that we can kind of stop during the year. And it reminds us that God does come through on His promises to us. God helps us remember how loved we are. We sing about it. And how faithful He is. We should shout about it. And if we expectantly wait, we're not going to be disappointed. Ever. That's right. Our eyes will be lifted to see. Our hearts will be drawn close to Emmanuel. Waiting on the Lord is never wasting anything. So we should be excited and, and anticipate something really, really fun. Just like we see in the movie uh, Elf, like with, with Buddy and, and what he thinks is the, like the greatest thing coming. Look at this. <gasps> wow. What's this? This no is sound. the North Pole. This no, it's not. Sound. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Where's the snow? Why are you smiling like that? I just like to smile. Smiling's my favorite. Make work your favorite. That's your favorite, okay? Okay. Work is your new favorite. Fine. It's time for the announcement. Okay. Okay, people, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., Santa's coming to town. Santa! Oh my god! Santa here? I know him. I know him. He'll be here to take pictures with all the children. Yeah. Just keep your receipts. 10 a.m. tomorrow. 10 a.m. tomorrow. Santa's coming to town. Yes. Can you sign this for me? <gasps> oh, hi. Santa's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I love Buddy. He gets excited about the, the coolest things. You know, Christmas is a time where we get to have fun and laugh and rejoice. But, but imagine back then. Way back then, go to Genesis and this promise is given that a Messiah would come. Imagine the wait back then. I mean, it just feels dark and awkward and lonely. Then, in the midst of the wait, you wait. Even 10 seconds of me just standing here is, is agony, right? And they had 400 years of silence from God in the midst of the wait. The struggle to keep the faith had to be there. We, we still struggle at times. We wait for something to change or something to happen or health to come back or finances to align themselves or, or whatever it is. And it's just this agony. Is God still here? Has God left the building? I'm not so sure about this faith thing anymore. Life can sometimes feel so dark. Then when God comes through, it instantly lights things up. Suddenly comes through and boom! Lights it all up. He just lights up the night sky with these shepherds. They're just doing their thing in the midst of 400 years of silence. And it just lights up. And the angels can't help but sing and proclaim, God is on the ground. The time was right. The night sky lights up like a, an August midday here in Texas. Just not as hot. Luke chapter 2 says that the angels say, Peace on earth. To all of you who please God. Now don't forget that caveat. Jesus is peace, but He promises peace on earth to all of you who please God. How do I please God? We follow and believe. Are you perfect? No. Will you ever be? When you're dead. But we'll be perfected along the way. Peace on earth who, of all who please God, follow and believe is pleasing God. 
the wait was finally over for the promised one who came, born like you and I are. And still, the best good news was still to come. That's the beautiful thing. That was good news. It gets better. And it will even be better down the line. This peace comes in the form of of canceled debts that we read about in Colossians 2. Colossians 2, verse 14. Paul writes, Jesus canceled the record of charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. You got a a bill that's big and it's due and he says, no, 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 no more. In this way, Jesus disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Christmas is about Jesus coming and canceling debts. We do celebrate, we have fun, we do all those things, but Christmas is the beginning of Easter and what was finalized there. That's the truest beauty and majesty of Christmas. It's the joy of the gift. We should be even more excited than Buddy the Elf was about Santa coming. The promised rescue, it equals peace with God. This faith that brings joy that Paul writes about in In Romans chapter 5, he he writes in in verses 1 and 2, I'll just read it to you. Paul writes, Therefore, since we've been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Christ Jesus, our Lord, has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. It's this rejoicing, this joy uh, of getting this undeserved, this unexpected gift. I I love watching videos of people getting a gift that they just can't even figure out how to to get words and actions out of. I want you to watch this this video of kids opening presents at Christmas. What is it? Yes, 
Bananas and feet pajamas. Apparently, that's what you want to get. I don't know if you noticed that one. I think it was number seven. I mean, he was totally speechless. I actually went and found uh, some story, uh, backstory on it, but that he was officially adopted, and that was a plaque that had his name there. That's why he couldn't, he couldn't speak. He couldn't, couldn't get the words out because he's like adopted. Does that sound familiar to us? We should be speechless about being adopted into God's family. Paul goes on in Romans 5. He's writing, he's just writing this beautiful story and picture about, about how our faith in him brings joy. And he, he says we can rejoice during challenging times because we get stronger. Our character gets developed and we get to live in this beautiful hope. And then in verses 6 through 9, he says, when we were utterly helpless, Jesus came on the scene to die for us even while we were still sinning. God shows his great love for us by sending Jesus here Christmas and then having him die in our place Easter so he'll certainly see us through and fully forgive us and then verses 10 and 11 since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son while we were still his enemies we will certainly be saved through the life of his son so now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because of our Lord Jesus Christ, that He has made us friends of God. See, the promised rescue that Paul's writing about, it, it means peace with God. Jesus did that. He's the one that, that brought the, the peace with God. Verse 1, Paul's writing, he says, Hey, despite our clear guilt, and we are clearly guilty, God, the judge, declares us righteous. If we believe. Because of God's great love that Pastor Michael was talking about earlier. And because God demonstrated his, his justice through putting it on Jesus. When someone chooses to believe in Jesus, God says, you are now right and clean before me. It's truly amazing. Judgment handed out on Jesus and then the gavel comes down on our lives. Andy, not guilty. Sarah, not guilty. Every one of you who chooses to believe, not guilty. The gavel comes down on us and he says, not guilty. That's really the story of Christmas. Yes, a baby born in a horse trough fulfilling prophecy and it's amazing it's an amazing miracle on prophecy and thousands of years old and and lots of prophetic things specifically fulfilled but it is about boots on the ground Jesus coming in our place judge and then we're judged not guilty when we believe faith in Jesus equals eternal life and peace with God we sing about peace Peace, peace over and over at Christmas. It's because of what Jesus did on the cross. Verse 10, Paul's writing it. And he's talking about this restored friendship with God. And apart from Jesus, we're actually enemies of God. That's terrifying, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, imagine being an enemy of God. That's not a good thing. We're friends with God because of Jesus and our faith in Him. Through faith in Him, the unfathomable happens God restores our relationship with him and this is Paul's best description he's he's trying to describe it as good as possible he's like it's you were an enemy and then you're Jesus did that and then you believe and you're restored and reconciled and now you're a friend that's like his best description he can give us to really understand it we're now in a perfectly loving and accepting relationship and God makes the first move to restore us the promised gift of Christmas that we're celebrating. Jesus here for us. And it takes us believing in Him by faith. Because when it all comes down to it, the story of Christmas, the beauty of Easter, as ugly as it was, the work of God in our lives, it's Him coming through for us. God comes through. He has never not come through. 
I remember for me, I was totally surprised. I was like those kids in that video when, when he gave me this undeserved gift that, that in no way was, was, was the blessing that he gave me and the restoration and the reconciliation and the forgiveness of my sins, in no way was it warranted on human terms. In fact, the opposite was actually deserved. Yet God, because of Jesus, he said, Scott, just believe and I will gift you Peace with me, relationship with me, friendship with me, adoption by me. You can unwrap the present. And I'm telling you, I was speechless that God would do that for me. But isn't that so much like God? That's just who He is. We see so many prophecies of, of how He showed us smaller pictures of that in the Old Testament. Isaiah has some beautiful prophetic uh, stories and, and even stories that just happened to Israel itself about how God loves and He comes for and He chooses and He calls back and He encourages and He strengthens and He holds up His people because His heart is always drawn to messy ones. Isaiah 41, verses 8-10. through 10. It's this amazing picture of how and who God is. He writes this, but as for you, Israel, my servant, that's his people, Jacob, my chosen one, and we cannot miss that he uses the word Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel, and then the people became God's people. As a part of that, the promises were fulfilled. When he uses the word Jacob after his name was changed, he's letting people know, even today, messy ones are mine. Because Jacob was a mess. Jacob is probably our greatest picture of, whew, I'm glad you're in there, Jacob. You know, Peter with his foot and mouth disease that he had, and, and Jacob with some of his decisions. And yet God says, Jacob, my chosen one, descended from Abraham, my friend. I have called you back from the ends of the earth, saying, you, messy ones, are my servant. For I have chosen you, and I will not throw you away. Don't be afraid. I'm with you. Don't be discouraged, for I'm your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up by my victorious right hand. You see, in Jesus, your past is forgiven. You get this purpose for living. You get a, a guidebook to know how to do it and great people in your life to help you along the way. And then you get a perfect, yet unimaginable in our brains, forever home in heaven. We don't even, we can't even comprehend how great it's going to be. In Jesus' name, it actually means God saves. God rescues. He's the rescuing king. So he was named such. And though time and time again, the people of Israel, God's own people, had rebelled against him, he was telling him here, you know, you can test my patience you can be inconsistent on, on going back to idolatry, and that's what he's referring to here. But he said, I'm, I'm coming for you because I want you. I'm not coming for you to come for you. I'm coming for you because you're mine. God consistently reminded them that they were and are his chosen. You are his chosen son or daughter. And that is good news in the midst of whatever's going on in your life and whatever you think about yourself. He rescues us from the stuff of life that sometimes overwhelms us. Anybody ever get overwhelmed by the stuff of life? And here's a God who comes through and He says, I'm going to remove frustration and I'm going to give you peace. It's a great trade. I'm going to replace shame with forgiveness that heals you. I'm going to destroy the worry and fear in your life with confidence in me and, and unconditional love from me for you. He wipes away depression with hope that does not disappoint. We've been chosen to be the recipients of God's grace in the sacrifice and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the promised rescuing King that we're worshiping this Christmas. For me, when He came in the midst of me being just like the ultimate me in charge of my life and messing it up and still just being like, I'm going to trust in me 
I'm going down with myself. I mean, you know, I was like, he's going nowhere and I'm going to follow him. I mean, it was a mess. And he came in the midst of it and he just, he just rescued me. Like he just came in there and he's like, jumped in the mud pit and he pulled me out of it. And I was speechless. I was undone. I was joyful yet, yet overwhelmed at how good he was and I, I, I couldn't put it into words even. There was this joyful excitement for what was happening and, and a joyful anticipation of what was to come. Like, if you would rescue me in this, what in the world are you going to do for me when I'm like, I believe in you? I'm like, wow, well, it, it's going to be amazing. Boom, just like that, he transformed my life from darkness to this beautiful light. The joy I had because of the gift of Jesus and the, and the restoration just like those kids opening presents, I, I couldn't properly express it. And not only did God come through for me, but he used good, normal, everyday, willing, and even somewhat messy people to, to do his work in my life, to, to minister to me, to help me, to rally to me, to, to speak into my life, to keep me accountable, to pray for me, to hold me up when I couldn't hold myself up anymore. He loves using community to come through. He uses people to show His heart to hurting, lost, broken, and even prideful people. Because God simply comes through. It reminds me of a scene from It's a Wonderful Life when He thought it was all lost and the people came through. Watch this scene here. <laughs> Mary did it, George. Mary did it. She told some yeah. people you were in trouble with it. They scattered all over town collecting money. Didn't ask any questions. Just said, George, in trouble. Tell me, you didn't spend it. Like it spread like fair. Another run on the bank. Here I, George. Merry Christmas. Not all. Not all. There we are. The line comes on the right. The line comes on the right. Come here, George. Merry Christmas. Come here, George. Come here, George. Come here, George. Now get this, it's from London. Oh. Mr. Gower cabled you need cash, stop. My office instructed to advance you up to $25,000, stop. Oh. Hee-haw and Merry Christmas, Sam Wainwright. Oh. George, the richest man in town. <laughs> Christian 
this present from a very dear friend of mine. That's right. That's right. And a boy clown. Okay, we're gonna make sure we're theologically correct. No angel gets their wings when bells ring. But I love that scene because it's a it's a community coming through and in a greater way. The community of of God, community of believers, man. We. We're here for each other and with each other. And, and so I highly encourage you to make sure you're a part of community in Christ. Because uh, that's one of the ways God comes through. He brings in, he brings in uh, peace and He brings in encouragement. He brings in family. He brings joy into your life. He brings hope and help. He loves to work through His people for His people. And then through His people for lost people to come into the family and be able to open that gift and go, I'm adopted? Like, it's legal. And it can't change? God comes through. That's the story of Christmas. It's the story of Easter. It's the story of the Gospel, which is our leader right here. We, we, we abide by what it says in here because this is Jesus Christ. This is the story of our Jesus from Genesis to Revelation. It's the narrative uh, of Jesus Christ and and we can read it and follow it and, and grow closer to Him and change this world around us and know how to answer any question that, that comes into our lives. Because God comes through. C.S. Lewis wrote this about, about that, that verse I read, Isaiah 41.10, where, where the author writes, Don't be afraid. The Lord showed this to, to C.S. Lewis at one time when he was just in, stuck in fear, almost paralyzed at what to do and how to live life. And, and he wrote this commentary about that one line. This is God speaking to, to C.S. Lewis. So when he read that, God just arrested him and said, Peace, child. Relax. Let go. Underneath are my everlasting arms. Let go. I will catch you. That's the kind of God we have. The God who says, Hey, just let go and let... Let me catch you and, and lead you in this life. I come through, I always do. I always have, no one can stop me. Walls of Jericho, I'll, I'll knock them down with trumpets. You know, uh, bad guys uh, that are three times your size, I'll, I'll, I'll have them kill themselves with, when you crash clay pots. You know, uh, uh, the, the, the Roman nation of Rome thinking they're putting me in a, in, in a tomb forever, uh, I'm going to move that out in a few days and I will never die. Our God comes through. He just does. He fulfills every promise, and He will for you. I'm going to ask you to stand right now, and I felt like God gave me a prayer for us this week. I was reading a bunch of Christmas devotionals, and this one prayer kind of stood out to me, and I, and I, and I was just I was looking at it. I was like, wow, that's a great prayer. And then I felt like the Lord kind of just changed it a little bit for us. And I want to pray this today. And if you're in this room and you've never made a decision to follow Jesus, know this first and foremost. This God who was promised to mankind says to you, accept my life and I will take you and all that you are and all that you aren't and I will give you my perfect life that I lived in your place and I went to the cross for you and I paid a price that you don't have to pay but you do need to put your faith and your life in me. You do need to say, you're my king and you're my savior and, I, I, and, I, and ask my forgiveness and I will forgive you and lead you into everlasting life. And you are mine and it is written and it cannot be unwritten and it cannot be erased. So if you're in here and you've never made that decision, when I pray this prayer, you just pray it for yourself. This could be your prayer of salvation in Jesus Christ, the promised rescuing king. Maybe you need to come back and you're just like, I'm not following him well. Take this prayer and, and apply it to your life and say, God, I want to follow you. You are my God, but I have not been doing that. And I want to follow you fully, wholeheartedly all the days of my life. And, and for the rest of us here, maybe we're following him well and 
following Him, you know, in, in the healthiest way ever. Let this prayer be a joyful reminder of who He is for you and in your life. Let this prayer be a, a reminder to you that there are lost people out there that God will take you to all the time, work, community, school, wherever it is. And they need to hear the gospel story and know how to find Jesus. And maybe you're the, the one that God has ordained to take them the message. And be excited about this and then take it to them. Take the Christmas message and the promised rescuing king to people. And you're, I know we have young ones in here today. First grade on up. You're never too young to know Jesus. Never. In fact, it'd be the greatest thing in the world to know Jesus as a, a first grader, a third grader, a, you know, a, a fifth grader on up. To know Him and then grow in that relationship. You can pray this prayer too. So just close your eyes. I'm going to pray this prayer for us. And you can, you can uh, just join in in your heart and mind here as I, as I pray and close. And then we're going to worship Him with one more song of worship about a God who lights up the darkness and cannot be beaten. Father God, thank you for sending your son Jesus so that I could get to know you, so that we have an opportunity to know you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being with us all our lives, even when we didn't know it. We know we need a Savior to set us free from sin, from selfishness, from all the wrong and hard things that make our lives difficult and messy. Forgive us of our sins. We repent and we want to live the way you created us to live. Be the Lord of my life. Be the Lord of our lives today. Save us by your grace. Save us from our sins and save us for your purposes. We want to learn to love you and grow in you more and more every day of our lives, to trust you and to become who you made us to be. Thank you for choosing us to be a part of your family, adopted sons and daughters never to change. We accept the promised gift of Jesus in our lives. And for anyone here who's making that decision for the first time, I pray that you just encourage them and let them know you have accepted Christ as your King, as your Lord, as your Savior today. And that will never change. And for the rest of us who already follow you, that we would be amazed, excited, and even anticipate more from you because you are our King. Fill us today with your peace. Help us to share this message of peace with others who need it. In Jesus' holy, righteous, perfect, and amazing name, we pray. Amen.